The Duchess of Devonshire, Georgiana Cavendish, was an English socialite, author, activist, political organizer, and aristocrat. She was the first wife of William Cavendish, the fifth Duke of Devonshire, and the mother of the sixth Duke of Devonshire. She was born into the Spencer family and married into the Cavendish family. The Duchess was well known for her charm, ability to sway politics, beauty, unconventional marital arrangement, extramarital affairs, and socializing. She was also well known for her gambling addiction, which resulted in massive debt. She was Diana, Princess of Wales's great-great-great-great-aunt. Their lives have been tragically paralleled, although being centuries apart. Well, in today's video, we will take a look at Georgiana Cavendish's scandalous life and don't forget to tell us in the comment section who you would like us to talk about next time. The Duchess was born on June 7, 1757 at the Spencer family house in Althorpe as Miss Georgiana Spencer, the first child of John and Georgiana Spencer. After her daughter's birth, her mother Lady Spencer wrote that I will own I feel so partial to my dear little G that I think I never shall love another so well. Two younger siblings followed, Henrietta and George. There is no evidence that Georgiana's parents had any extramarital encounters. Instead, they raised Georgiana and her siblings in a harmonious marriage. Georgiana became close to her mother in the meantime, who was rumored to prefer Georgiana to her other children. Georgiana Spencer became the Honorable Georgiana Spencer in 1761 when her father became the Viscount Spencer. Her mother became Lady Georgiana Spencer and her father became Earl Spencer in 1765. On her 17th birthday, June 7, 1774, Lady Georgiana Spencer was married to society's most eligible bachelor, William Cavendish, the fifth Duke of Devonshire who was aged 25. The wedding took place at Wimbledon Parish Church. It was a small ceremony attended only by her parents, her paternal grandmother Lady Cooper, one of her prospective brothers-in-law, and her soon-to-be sister-in-law, the Duchess of Portland. Her parents were emotionally reluctant to let their daughter go, but she was wed to one of the wealthiest and most powerful men in the land. Her father, who had always shown affection to his children, wrote to her, My dearest Georgiana, I did not know till lately how much I loved you. I miss you more every day and every hour. Mother and daughter continue to correspond throughout their lives and many of their letters survive. From the beginning of the marriage, the Duke of Devonshire, who was called the Duke by his family and friends, proved to be an emotionally reserved man who did not meet Georgiana's emotional needs. The spouses also had little in common. He would seldom be at her side and would spend nights at Brooks's playing cards. The Duke continued with adulterous behavior throughout their married life and discord followed pregnancies that ended in miscarriage or failure to produce a male heir. Before their marriage, the Duke had fathered an illegitimate daughter, Charlotte Williams, born from a dalliance with a former milliner, Charlotte Spencer, of no relation to the House of Spencer. This was unknown to the Duchess until years after her marriage to the Duke. After the death of the child's mother, the Duchess was compelled to raise Charlotte herself. Georgiana was very pleased with Charlotte, although her own mother Lady Spencer expressed disapproval. I hope you have not talked of her to people. The besotted Georgiana replied, she's the best-humored little thing you ever saw. In 1782, while on a retreat from London with the Duke, Georgiana met Lady Elizabeth Foster, widely known as Bess, in the city of Bath. She became close friends with Bess, who had become destitute after separating from her husband and two sons. Given the bond that developed between the two women and the difficult position her new friend was in, with the Duke's acquiescence Georgiana agreed to have Lady Elizabeth live with them. When the Duke began a sexual relationship with Lady Elizabeth, a menage a trois was established and it was arranged that Lady Elizabeth live with them permanently. While it was common for male members of the upper class to have mistresses, it was not common or generally acceptable for a mistress to live so openly with a married couple. Furthermore, Georgiana had been desperately lonely since her marriage to the Duke and finally having found what she believed to be the ideal friend, she became emotionally codependent on Lady Elizabeth. Having no alternative, the Duchess became complicit in her best friend's affair with her husband the Duke. The arrangement among the three is more commonly referred to as a menage a trois. 
In one of her letters, Georgiana wrote to Bess, My dear Bess, do you hear the voice of my heart crying to you? Do you feel what it is for me to be separated from you? Nevertheless, Bess herself envied her and wished for her position. However, despite her envy, Bess did indeed love Georgiana. At her death years later, a locket of Georgiana's hair was found around Elizabeth's neck, as well as a bracelet also containing hair of Georgiana on a table beside her deathbed. Lady Elizabeth insinuated her way into the marriage by taking advantage of the Duchess's friendship and codependency on her, and engineered her way into a sexual relationship with the Duke. Lady Elizabeth engaged in well-documented sexual relations with other men while she was in the love triangle with the Duke and Duchess. Among their contemporaries, the relationship between the Duchess of Devonshire and Lady Elizabeth Foster was the subject of speculation, which has continued beyond their time. The love triangle itself was a notorious topic, it was an irregular arrangement in a high-profile marriage. Lady Elizabeth's affair with the Duke resulted in two illegitimate children, a daughter, Caroline Rosalie, and a son, Augustus Clifford. Despite her unhappiness with her detached and philandering husband and volatile marriage, social norms dictated that Georgiana must produce an heir for her extramarital sexual liaison to be socially acceptable. The first successful pregnancy resulted in the birth of Lady Georgiana Dorothy Cavendish on July 12, 1783. Called Little G, she would become the Countess of Carlisle and have her own issue. Georgiana developed a strong mothering sentiment raising Charlotte and she insisted on nursing her own children contrary to the aristocratic custom of having a wet nurse. On August 29, 1785, a second successful pregnancy resulted in another daughter, Lady Harriet Elizabeth Cavendish, called Hario, who would become Countess Granville and have children of her own. Finally, on May 21, 1790, the Duchess gave birth to a male heir to the dukedom, William George Spencer Cavendish, who took the title of Marquess of Hartington at birth and was called Hart. He would never marry and would become known as the Bachelor Duke. With the birth of the Marquess of Hardington, Georgiana was able to take a lover. While there is no evidence of when Georgiana began her affair with Charles Grey, later Earl Grey, she did become pregnant by him in 1791. Sent off to France, Georgiana believed she would die in childbirth. Despondent, she wrote a letter to her recently born son stating, As soon as you are old enough to understand this letter, it will be given to you. It contains the only present I can make you, my blessing, written in my blood. Alas, I am gone before you could know me, but I loved you, I nized you nine months at my breast. I love you dearly. On February 20, 1792, Eliza Courtney was born without complications. Georgiana's heart was broken yet again when she was forced to give away her illegitimate daughter Eliza to Gray's family. Georgiana would later be allowed to pay visits to her daughter, providing her with presence and affection, and Eliza would grow up to marry Lieutenant Colonel Robert Ellis and bear a daughter named Georgiana. While in exile in France in the early 1790s, Georgiana suffered from isolation and sorely felt the separation from her children. To her eldest, she wrote, Your letter dated the 1st of NOV was delightful to me, though it made me very melancholy, my dearest child. This year has been the most painful of my life. When I do return to you, never leave you I hope again, it will be too great a happiness for me dear Georgiana and it will have been purchased by many days of regret, indeed every hour I pass away from you, I regret you. If I amuse myself or see anything I admire, I long to share the happiness with you, if on the contrary, I am out of spirits I wish for your presence which alone would do me good. In order to return to England and her children, she conceded to her husband's demands and renounced her love for Charles Grey. Family records of her exile in France were subsequently erased. However, during that period, the children of the Duke and Duchess had at one point been informed of the reason for her absence. While the Duchess of Devonshire coped with the marital arrangements on the surface throughout her marriage, she nevertheless suffered emotional and psychological distress. She sought further personal consolation from a dissipated existence in passions, socializing, fashion, politics, writing, addictions, gambling, drinking, and drugs, and affairs with several men, not just Grey, possibly including the bachelor John Sackville, third Duke of Dorset. Georgiana was charismatic, generous, good-humored, and intelligent. Kind-hearted, 
Georgiana instinctively wanted to help others and from a young age, happily gave her money to poor children or to her desperate friends. Lady Charlotte Berry wrote of Georgiana's generosity, when some individual came to her in pecuniary distress, she would always relieve him or her and leave her own difficulties unprovided for. Oftentimes she was wrong in doing so. One must be just before one is generous. But it is impossible not to be charmed by the kindly impulse which made her, without a moment's hesitating, shield another from distress. Georgiana's empathy extended towards animals as well. After noticing a starving cow in a field, Georgiana deduced its owner could not afford to feed it. She had the man found and gave him some money. Despite being extremely self-conscious and making strenuous efforts to appear perfect, Georgiana always appeared natural even when she was called upon to open a ball in front of 800 people. She could engage in friendly chatter with several people simultaneously and still make each person feel special. Widely described as almost impossible to dislike, Georgiana captured the hearts of almost everyone she met. Georgiana was not a snob and lacked the condescending airs of the aristocracy. She made people of all classes feel valued and at ease in her company. An example of her lack of airs was shown when Georgiana pointedly danced with French actor Monsieur Tessier after the Duchess of Manchester, Elizabeth Montague, snobbishly refused to speak to him because he earned a living. From childhood, Georgiana showed a characteristic need to please others and a need for attention. Her mother Georgiana Spencer, Countess Spencer, had an interest in education for girls and had discussed being patron of the educational academy that Blue Stockings poet Anna Letitia Barbald was to establish. Indeed, Georgiana's mother raised her daughter to behave as if she were a courtier, always on show, and the strict education and training had a counter effect, only augmenting her people pleasing tendencies. Lady Spencer knew she was partly responsible for her daughter's faults and worried for her daughter's future. Her natural temperament combined with her breeding made Georgiana into an excitable, impressionable young woman vulnerable to peer pressure. Indeed, Georgiana did the opposite of what Mary Delaney hoped and was instead corrupted by her contemporaries. Her inability to say no to her degenerate friends in the ton led Georgiana into many scrapes against her better judgment and made her feel shame over her behavior. With her renowned unconventional beauty and kind character, and her marriage to the affluent and powerful Duke of Devonshire, the Duchess of Devonshire enjoyed preeminence in society. She was a high emblem of the era. Georgiana was arguably the Diana, Princess of Wales of her time. Her popularity with the press and public can be compared to what her descendant experienced more than 200 years later. Like Diana, every move Georgiana made was watched by spies around her and then reported on by the press. Her every mistake made a mockery the next day in the papers. On a personal note, Georgiana and Diana had in common a famously unhappy marriage, a binge-eating disorder, a passionate personality, and a mutual love for their children. Like her dear friend Marie Antoinette, the Duchess of Devonshire was one of the fashion icons of her time and her elegantly flashy style made her the leader of fashion in England. Every outfit Georgiana wore, including her hairstyle, was immediately copied by the masses. The fashionable styling of her hair alone reached literally extraordinary heights above her exuberant outfits. Using her influence as a leading socialite and fashion icon, the Duchess of Devonshire contributed to politics, science, and literature. As part of her illustrious social engagements, the Duchess would gather around her a large salon of literary and political figures. Famously, when the Duchess was stepping out of her carriage one day, an Irish dustman exclaimed, Love and bless you, my lady, let me light my pipe in your eyes. Thereafter, whenever others would compliment her, the Duchess would retort after the dustman's compliment, all others are insipid. As was common among the aristocracy of her time, Georgiana routinely gambled for leisure and amusement. However, her gaming spiraled into a ruinous addiction made worse by her emotional instability. In the first years of her marriage, she accumulated debts surpassing the £4,000 that the Duke provided her annually as pin money. Her own mother disapproved and admonished her, unsuccessfully, to break her habit. 
After she had first incurred over 3,000 pounds in debt, Georgiana implored her parents to give her a loan as she absolutely would not inform her husband of her debts. Her parents acquiesced and told her to inform the Duke he nevertheless found out beforehand and repaid them. For the rest of her life, Georgiana continued to amass an immense, ever-escalating debt that she always tried to keep hidden from her husband even though he was among the richest men in the land. While she would admit to some amount it was always less than the total, she could not keep up with even her stated amount. In confidence, she would ask for loans from the Prince of Wales. At one point, to try to settle some of her debts, she did not shrink from pressing her friend, the affluent banker Thomas Coutts, for funds. Her absence from English society and exile in France had isolated Georgiana and was a low point for her in every respect. She returned to England, a changed woman. The Duke began suffering from gout and she spent her time at his side nursing him. Along with a recent miscarriage, this circumstance with her husband brought about a softening and closeness between the two. She took a positive interest in science, took up writing again, producing two more works, and even continued her political activism while trying to rebuild the Whig Party to no avail before its end. Georgiana also came to meet and become friends with the wife of her former lover, Charles Gray. In 1796, Georgiana succumbed to illness in one eye, the medical treatment resulted in a scarring of her face. However, those scars released her from her fears. All the inhibitions about whether she was beautiful enough or whether she was up to the job left her. In her late thirties, Georgiana was able to regain preeminence and enjoyment in open society, although her personal life would continue to be marred by degrees of unhappiness, debt, and decline in health. During her early 40s, the Duchess of Devonshire devoted her time to the coming out of her eldest daughter, Lady Georgiana Dorothy Cavendish. The debutante was presented in 1800 and the Duchess saw her daughter wed Lord Morpeth, the heir apparent of the Earl of Carlisle, in 1801. It was the only time the Duchess of Devonshire saw one of her issue marry. Georgiana's health continued to decline well into her 40s and her gambling addiction continued. She once reached out to her mother, begging for a sum of 100 pounds and complaining to her of jaundice. While her mother at first believed her daughter was just ill from her gambling, Countess Spencer, as well as those around Georgiana, soon came to realize she was truly sick. She was thought to be suffering from a liver abscess. Georgiana Cavendish, Duchess of Devonshire, died on March 30, 1806, at 3.30, at the age of 48. She was surrounded by her husband, the 5th Duke of Devonshire, her mother, Countess Spencer, her sister, the Countess of Bessborough, her eldest daughter, Lady Morpeth, who was eight months pregnant, and Lady Elizabeth Foster. They were all said to have been inconsolable over her death. For the first time, the Duke showed moving emotion towards his late wife. A contemporary wrote, The Duke has been most deeply affected and has shown more feeling than anyone thought possible. Indeed, every individual in the family are in a dreadful state of affliction. Georgiana's eldest daughter furthermore poured out her feelings, O oh my beloved, my adored departed mother, are you indeed forever parted from me? Shall I see no more that angelic countenance or that blessed voice, you whom I loved with such tenderness? You who were the best of mothers, do I wanted to strew violets over her dying bed as she strewed sweets over my life, but they would not let me. Her distant cousin, Charles James Fox, for whom she had triumphantly campaigned, was noted to have shed tears. The Prince of Wales himself lamented, the best-natured and the best-bred woman in England is gone. Thousands of the people of London congregated at Piccadilly where the Cavendish family's townhouse was located to mourn her. She was buried at the family vault at All Saints Parish Church, now Derby Cathedral, in Derby. The legacy of the life of Georgiana Cavendish, Duchess of Devonshire, has remained a topic of study and intrigue in cultural and historical spheres centuries after her death. Immediately after her death, the Duke of Devonshire discovered the extent of her debts. He soon enough married Lady Elizabeth Foster, who became Duchess of Devonshire as his second wife. Georgiana's children were discontented with the marriage as they never liked Lady Elizabeth at all, something that caused dismay with their mother when she was alive. When William Cavendish, 5th Duke of Devonshire, died on July 29, 1811, the Marquess of Hartington became 6th Duke of Devonshire. 
he sought to liquidate his late mother's entire debts. Meanwhile, Lady Elizabeth fought to keep the Cavendish properties to which she wasn't entitled. The Sixth Duke denied her demand that her illegitimate son, Clifford, bear the Cavendish crest along with the Fifth Duke of Devonshire. Infuriated, Lady Elizabeth brought up her affair with the Fifth Duke of Devonshire by publicly announcing that he had sired her illegitimate children. The Sixth Duke of Devonshire finally made an end to it all by paying off Lady Elizabeth and getting rid of her. Nevertheless, Georgiana's children had mutually positive relations with Lady Elizabeth Foster's children for the rest of their lives, having grown up together. In 1786, Susanna Rousen, who went on to become a best-selling author, dedicated her first published work, Victoria, to the Duchess of Devonshire. With the topic of liberation at the heart of her policies, the bold involvement of the Duchess of Devonshire in political activism pioneered women's involvement in public, championing their influential participation long before the validation of women's rights and subsequent feminist ideals. Artwork representing the Duchess of Devonshire by reputable painters of the Georgian era remain, including a 1787 portrait by the famed Thomas Gainsborough which was once thought lost. Over 1,000 personal letters written by the Duchess of Devonshire remain in existence. Chatsworth, the Duke of Devonshire's seat, houses a majority of her letters in historical archives. In modern times, her life circumstances are seen as an example of female oppression by historical, cultural, and legal constructs favoring male interests while denying rights to the female party in a relationship. They have become the subject of scholarly and dramatized works. Thanks for watching today's video and don't forget to like and subscribe.